How's it going guys? You're watching Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host Kyle Brotherson and today we're going to talk about electronic fuel injection. EFI guys, this is a hot topic. A lot of people are just kind of up in arms that we don't yet have electronic fuel injection on our two-stroke bikes. Guys are sitting there saying, well look, it's amazing, it's on my four-stroke bike and why can't I have it on my two-stroke bike? And I can understand that sentiment and for a long time I was kind of in that camp. Let me just say this, I think electronic fuel injection is eventually going to come to our two-stroke bikes just like it did on our four-stroke bikes but I'm not so sure that we want to hurry that process along. I know this is gonna be a little bit controversial to some people because they'll be like, look what's happened with snowmobile, snowmobiles and look what's happened with boats on two-stroke motors. They're more efficient, they get more power, all of these things. Notwithstanding all of that, there is a level of complexity and there is a level of tunability that you can lose for the lay person if you have electronic fuel injection. This bike right here, KTM 350XEF, has electronic fuel injection. It's a throttle body fuel injection, so it's not directly squirting it right into, into the cylinder like it would on your car. Um, and it's also not quite as efficient as the one on your car. On your car, your electronic fuel injection, you would have an oxygen sensor or multiple O2 sensors, as you'd call them, out here on the exhaust to monitor the actual fuel, the fuel burn as it's coming out of the cylinder. And that allows those engines, because they have computers and they have sophisticated, you know, calibration, that allows those to really, really make your car run more efficiently. The dirt bikes don't have that. They have an altitude, they have like a, a kind of a barometric sensor inside the throttle body and they're definitely mixing and vaporizing and atomizing the fuel better, a little bit better than a carburetor would, but it's not like it is head and shoulders above a carbureted model. If you can get your carbureted model jetted in the range for your altitude, they run phenomenal. On that two stroke over there, I have Electron carburetor, which is kind of a self metering carburetor, and it runs unbelievably well, all the way from sea level, clear up to 12,000, well, 11,600 feet is where I've had it, and it runs amazing through all those RPM ranges, or I mean, all those altitude changes. With, with, uh, the, with your fuel air mixture, we're talking about density. The, the air density, and, and the air density changes with temperature, it changes with altitude, and that's where your EFI can help you to become a little bit more efficient. But it's not like it's twice as efficient, and it makes it so, with this, with this bike, I have to have a battery. It's got a fuel pump on it. It's got, a, it's got this EFI, it's got a fuel pump. There's just more things that can go wrong. Now, I, I like it. It's really great. Um, but it's not like it's the best thing ever. One of the nice things about having a two-stroke bike still currently is that you don't need a computer to tune it. That bike over there, if I want to tune the carburetor, whether I have a key-in carburetor, a McCuny carburetor, electron carburetor, a smart carb, all I need to tune that thing is a couple of simple tools, like a screwdriver. Literally, a flat blade screwdriver, and I can tune that carburetor. With this one, I cannot tune it unless I have a, unless I have a computer. Unless I buy a module, a tuning module, to tune it. Now, if I find myself out on the trail, back in the woods like I am right now, if I have a screwdriver, I can tune that one, the two-stroke. I cannot tune my four-stroke electronic fuel injected bike with a screwdriver. My point is, there's a, there is value in simplicity. I'm not poo-pooing EFI. I like it. And I think probably, whether I like it or not, it's going to come to the two strokes. But it's going to come at cost. It's not cheap. And there is a little bit of weight that you're going to add. Maybe not a lot. Maybe, maybe nothing on a bike like this, because this already has a battery on it. Uh, so maybe it's not going to add really any weight to, to a bike that's already got electric start and a battery. But there is a level of complexity there. It's a trade-off, you know. 
and uh, I like them both. But once, once, once you figure out how to tune a carburetor, it really isn't a big deal. I tune the carburetor once or twice a year. You know, and when you're doing just your regular maintenance, that's not a big deal. You're gonna change your oil on this a heck of a lot more than you're gonna be changing your carburetor. Now, if you're a dude that runs motocross and you need to, you need to have your bike running perfectly at tip-top shape in the morning and then, and then have it uh, you know, tuned differently in the afternoon or, or in the midday, uh, you know what? You're probably gonna map your four-stroke differently during those times anyway. So you're still gonna tune this thing with EFI just like you'd be tuning your carbureted model. So, you know, EFI, it's a great thing, I like it, um, but it isn't the be-all, end-all, and it isn't the best thing since sliced bread. It's a good thing, but it's not necessarily a mandatory thing, and I definitely do not agree with anyone who says that a carbureted dirt bike is obsolete. I just don't buy it. I really appreciate you guys, the, the support that you guys have shown me. And uh, if you want to help to continue to support Dirt Bike Channel, one thing that you can definitely do is go over to dirtbikechannel.com forward slash parts. I have a link there, or a couple of links there, affiliate links, where you can order your parts for your bike through a couple of, you know, Rocky Mountain ATV and through motor, motorsport.com. Uh, you'll be able to get your parts. It's not going to cost you any extra, but Dirt Bike will get Dirt Bike Channel. Uh, we'll get a small referral bonus and that helps us to put out more content like this. So anyway, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.